Question 1. What should you do if you need to use a safety lanyard but the stitching is damaged? A. Ask for a replacement and do not start working until you have a suitable replacement. B. Dispose of it and carry on working without one. C. Continue using the lanyard only if the damaged stitching is less than 4 inches. D. Continue to use the lanyard and get another one at the end of your shift. Correct answer is, A. Ask for a replacement and do not start working until you have a suitable replacement. Question 2. Over time, excess noise can damage your hearing. Which of these is an early sign of this? A. Infections of the inner ear. B. There are no early signs. C. A rash may appear around the outside of your ear. D. A ringing sound or even a temporary hearing loss may occur. Correct answer is. D. A ringing sound or even a temporary hearing loss may occur. Question 3. How many, minimum, points of contact should you have with a ladder at all times? A. 6. B. 5. C. 3. D. 4. Correct answer is, C. 3. Question 4. Over time, excess noise can damage your ability to hear. Can such a condition be reversed? A. Yes, but you will be forced to change your current job. B. With time, the condition may repair itself. C. The damage is permanent and cannot be reversed. D. You will need surgery to repair your hearing loss. Correct answer is, C. The damage is permanent and cannot be reversed. Question 5. The best way to ensure a ladder is secured and won't slip is to A. Tie it at the bottom. B. Tie it at the top. C. Use a piece of wood to wedge the bottom. D. Have a colleague hold it while you work. Correct answer is B. Tie it at the top. Question 6. Which of these statements is true about storing materials on a working platform? A. The materials only need securing if it's going to be there overnight. B. Unsecured materials can be stored as long as they are above the guard rail height. C. The materials don't need to be secured if they're going to be there less than 6 hours. D. You must ensure the platform can take the weight of the materials and the materials must be stored securely so they can't fall. Correct answer is, D. You must ensure the platform can take the weight of the materials and the materials must be stored securely so they can't fall. Question 7. What should you do if you accidentally drop your safety helmet and crack it? A. Get another one immediately. B. Wait until your break and get another one. C. Carry on working if it's only a small crack. D. Wait until the end of your shift and get another one for the next day. Correct answer is, A. Get another one immediately. Question 8. How should you wear your safety helmet if you need to lean over an exposed edge while working at height? A. You should tilt your helmet backwards which should prevent it from falling over. B. You should ensure you make use of the chin strap and wear the helmet as normal. C. You should tilt your helmet to the side which will help to prevent it from falling over. D. You should not wear your helmet while carrying out these tasks. Correct answer is, B. You should ensure you make use of the chin strap and wear the helmet as normal. Question 9. Checking a ladder before use should be done by A. Your supervisor B. Your health and safety rep C. The person about to use it D. The site manager Correct answer is C. The person about to use it. Question 10. Protective midsoles in your safety footwear are designed to A. Prevent you from twisting your ankle. B. Prevent chemical burns if you step on hazardous chemicals. C. Ensure your footwear remains comfortable throughout the day. D. Protect your feet from nails and other sharp objects. Correct answer is D. Protect your feet from nails and other sharp objects. Question 11. What is edge protection designed to do? A. It's designed to direct rainwater into a specific area. B. It's designed to stop materials and people from falling over. C. 
It's designed to allow easier access to the roof. D. It's designed to stop unauthorized entry to the roof. Correct answer is, B. It's designed to stop materials and people from falling over. Question 12. If you are using inflatable airbags as a means of fall arrest you must ensure that the inflation pump, A, is turned off every couple of minutes to avoid the airbags from overinflation. B. Is electrically powered. C. Is turned off as soon as the airbags are full. D. Stays on at all times when there's work being carried out at height. Correct answer is, D. Stays on at all times when there's work being carried out at height. Question 13. If you're the first person to discover a fire, what should you do? A. Activate the fire alarm. B. Leave the building immediately. C. Head to your locker and get your personal items. D. Pick up a fire extinguisher and tackle the fire. Correct answer is, A. Activate the fire alarm. Question 14. Using eye protection is vital for on-site safety. When should you wear eye protection? A. Only when you're working with power tools. B. When the task has a potential for eye injury and if the site rules demand it. C. Only when you're working with hazardous chemicals. D. Only when your eyes come into direct sunlight. Correct answer is, B. When the task has a potential for eye injury and if the site rules demand it. Question 15. You have just finished working with a particularly noisy piece of equipment and you have a ringing in your ears. What does this symptom imply? A. Your body has been exposed to excess vibration. B. You may be coming down with the flu or a respiratory infection. C. The level of noise was high, but it was still safe. D. You've temporarily damaged your hearing. Correct answer is, D. You've temporarily damaged your hearing. Question 16. Wearing a safety helmet in hot weather can be uncomfortable. Which of these is true about wearing a safety helmet in hot weather? A. You must keep it on at all times and ensure you're wearing it correctly. B. You can drill small holes in your helmet to increase airflow and keep you cool. C. You can take it off for short periods of time while you're working. D. You can wear it sideways if it's more comfortable this way. Correct answer is, A. You must keep it on at all times and ensure you're wearing it correctly. Question 17. What should you do if you're given a task that requires you to wear a full body harness but you've never used one before? A. Carry on and try to work it out yourself. B. Ask for an expert to train you. C. Ask a colleague who wears one for advice. D. Ask for the instruction manual and figure it out yourself. Correct answer is, B. Ask for an expert to train you. Question 18. Which of these would you not put a mobile tower scaffold on? A. An abandoned parking lot. B. A concrete walkway. C. An asphalt road. D. An uneven playground. Correct answer is, D. An uneven playground. Question 19. Which of these best describes working at height? A. 6 meters above the ground. B. 10 meters above the ground. C. Any height above or below ground level that can cause an injury if you fall. D. 5 meters above the ground. Correct answer is, C. Any height above or below ground level that can cause an injury if you fall. Question 20. What is the maximum permitted gap between the guard rails on a working platform? A. 470 millimeters. B. 300 millimeters. C. 520 millimeters. D. 500 millimeters. Correct answer is A. 470 millimeters. Question 21. What should you do if you need to lift a load which blocks your front view? A. Ask a colleague to help carry the load and ensure you both can see ahead. B. Ask a colleague to walk beside you and give instructions. C. Ask a colleague to walk in front of you and warn others that you're approaching. D. Carry on lifting the load because it's so large that everyone will see you approaching.
Correct answer is A. Ask a colleague to help carry the load and ensure you both can see ahead. Question 22. Is using a wheelbarrow to carry a load considered as manual handling? A. No, all the weight of the load is carried by the wheelbarrow. B. Yes, but only if you need to place items in and out of the wheelbarrow. C. No, unless the wheelbarrow gets a flat tire. D. Yes, you are still handling the load manually. Correct answer is D. Yes, you are still handling the load manually. Question 23. What does a HOD permit allow you to do? A. It allows you to carry out work which could start a fire. B. It allows you to work in extreme temperatures. C. It allows you to start fires on a work site. D. It allows you to carry out fire drills on site. Correct answer is A. It allows you to carry out work which could start a fire. Question 24. What chemical fire extinguishers were designed to tackle what class of fire? A. Class B fires. B. Class F fires. C. Class D fires. D. Electrical fires. Correct answer is B. Class F fires. Question 25. Which of these best describes a fire assembly point? A. The designated place where fire extinguishers are kept. B. It's an area that has a potential fire risk. C. It's the area you should assemble if there's a fire. D. It's an area you must avoid if there's a fire. Correct answer is C. It's the area you should assemble if there's a fire. Question 26. Which of these should you stop and think about before attempting to lift a load? A. The weight of the load. B. The size and shape of the load. C. The best way of gripping the load. D. All of the above. Correct answer is D. All of the above. Question 27. What should you do if you need to carry a load down a steep slope? A. Roll the item, S down the slope. B. Place the item, S on your shoulders and take it down. C. Stop and assess if it's safe to carry the item, S down the slope. D. Place the item, S on your shoulder and run down the slope to finish quickly. Correct answer is, C. Stop and assess if it's safe to carry the item, S down the slope. Question 28. What should you do if a load is too heavy for you to move on your own? There's no colleagues around to help you and the load cannot be divided into smaller parts. A. Place the load on your shoulders and carry it quickly to avoid injury. B. Do not attempt to move the load unless you find a safe way of moving it. C. Use a forklift truck even though you are not trained to use one. D. Drag the load on the ground. Correct answer is, B. Do not attempt to move the load unless you find a safe way of moving it. Question 29. What should you do if you need to move items which are too heavy to carry in a single load? A. Ask your colleagues to help you. B. Divide the items and move them in smaller loads. C. Try to find a lifting aid such as a wheelbarrow or trolley. D. All of the above. Correct answer is D. All of the above. Question 30. What's the first thing you should do if you discover a fire on site? A. Activate the fire alarm. B. Grab all your tools and belongs and leave the area. C. Tackle the fire yourself. D. Run away from the fire and go home. Correct answer is, A. Activate the fire alarm. Question 31. The maximum weight you can carry should be decided by, A. Your site manager. B. You. C. Your health and safety rep. D. Your supervisor. Correct answer is, B. You. Question 32. You believe that excess noise at the job site has damaged your hearing. What do you need to do? A. Take a few sick days and rest. B. Place cotton wads in your ears to prevent any future damage. C. Have your doctor or employer arrange a hearing test for you. D. There is nothing that you can do. The damage is permanent and cannot be undone.
Correct answer is, C. Have your doctor or employer arrange a hearing test for you. Question 33. Where should you go if you hear the fire alarm? A. Go to you supervisor's office and tell him what's happening. B. Go to the site manager's office and tell him what's happening. C. Go to your designated fire assembly point. D. Go to the canteen and await further instructions. Correct answer is, C. Go to your designated fire assembly point. Question 34. Water fire extinguishers should only be used on fires fueled by, A. Wood, paper, textile and solid materials. B. Live electrical equipment. C. Flammable liquids, gasoline, kerosene. D. Flammable gases, propane, butane. Correct answer is, A. Wood, paper, textile and solid materials. Question 35. Which of these fire extinguishers should not be used on electrical fires? Choose two answers. A. Carbon dioxide, CO2. B. Dry powder. C. Water. D. Foam. Correct answer is, C. Water. D. Foam. Question 36. What should you do if the trolley you're using gets damaged and one of its wheels fall off? A. Find another way to move the load. B. Stop using the trolley and carry the load the remaining distance. C. Get a colleague to help you drag the trolley the remaining distance. D. Drag the trolley yourself. Correct answer is, A. Find another way to move the load.